Um, so what we've been doing so far are what we call indefinite integrals. Um, they don't have any uh, what we call limits of integration. But most of the time from this point forward, when you see an integral, you're going to see numbers written beside the integrand. All right, the number on the bottom we refer to as A, the number on the top we refer to as B. So when you see that, you're going to take the antiderivative like you have been, but after you take the antiderivative, you're going to plug in the top number, and you're going to plug in the bottom number, and you're going to subtract. So it's top minus bottom. So there's the notation. You see the integral from a b of f of x dx is big F of b, the antiderivative of b minus the antiderivative of a is going to be the answer. So we're going to start getting numbers for our answers here. So for example, if we want to integrate from 1 to 4 of 2x plus 1 with respect to x, we're going to take our derivative as we have been, or our antiderivative, excuse me. The antiderivative of 2x would be x squared. The antiderivative of 1 is x. And let's stick our plus c on there. Now we have integrated. So the integral symbol is gone. So what we do at this point is we put a, kind of like a square bracket at the end. And we put our limits of integration there just so that we don't forget what they are. Okay, so that's step number one. Then we're going to plug in our limits. So we plug in 4, 4 squared plus 4 plus c. Now this is where most people mess up. Since we're subtracting, you need to put parentheses. Okay, you need to put parentheses. So we've got 16 plus 4 is 20 plus c. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So we've got minus 2 minus c because you distribute that negative. So the c's end up, end up canceling. So here's the good news. Uh, when we are doing definite integrals, we call these definite integrals because they end up with a definite numerical answer, you don't really actually have to put the plus c on there because every single time it's going to cancel like that. So you don't have to worry about the plus c with definite integration. Anytime you're doing an indefinite integral or a particular solution, you still got to put the plus c on there, but you don't have to worry about it with this. Now, um, that gave us 18. I want to do the exact same problem with different limits of integration to show you that your limits of integration matter. You're going to get a different answer. Okay, so let's do it from negative 3 to positive 2. Our antiderivative is the same, but this time I'm just not going to worry about putting that plus c on there. So x squared plus x. Let's plug in 2. 2 squared is, uh, well, I'll just plug it in. Minus, make sure we get parentheses in the right places. 2 squared is 4, plus 2 is 6. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. 9 plus negative 3 is uh, 6. And so 6 minus 6 is 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. Um, so you can get 0 as an answer. Now, on Monday or whatever day we end up returning, we will see, well, what does this actually mean in terms of the graph of our function and, and things like that. But right now, all you need to know is this, how, this is how you calculate the definite integral. Um, so I'm going to give you a worksheet that just has practice on definite intervals. Um, and then I'm also...